good? Matt Clark here at the new Matt Clark. How are each and every one of you doing on this amazing Friday? I'm doing great. My girl's doing great. My family's doing great. I hope each and every one of you are doing great. Although, let's be honest, times just aren't that great. They're just not, right? If you could please hit that like button. If you could please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button so you get all my videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that'd be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link is in the description of most of my videos. So what's up, what's up, what's up? Happy Friday to each and every one of you. I hope you guys have a great weekend. I'm going on a road trip. I'm going out to my girl's hometown up north in Thunder Bay. We're going on a road trip. So obviously my videos are going to be a little bit more sparse. I actually may do some vlogging. We'll see what happens on the way. We'll see what I get into. And uh, I just want y'all to know that's what's happening. So if you hear a little less from me over the next little bit, that is why. But don't you fear, we got a new video here tonight. And tonight I want to speak on going on the run. Somebody asked me recently, can I do a video about going on the run? And just to kind of explain what it's like. It's not all it's cracked up to be. What kind of lifestyle it is when you're on the run and what you can expect if you get caught. So it doesn't really matter if you're on the run from young offender, if you're on the run from adult, like a halfway house or something like that, or if you actually escape from prison. Being on the run is being on the run. You're not gonna get a whole bunch of time for that, but you could get anywhere. I think it's like six months to two years for an escape lawful custody. So keep that in mind. And if you're on parole, you run from a halfway house. If you run from uh, an open custody and young offender, or probation, anything like that, if you go on the run, you're done. Any chance you have to go to camp in the future, if you look or possibly will do any pen time, any chance of getting a parole or early parole, anything like that, are out the window every single time you breach or go on the run. Now, let me tell you something. Being on the run, although it may seem like it's fun, it may seem like it's what you got to do if you're involved in this life, if you're involved in the street life, but it doesn't make no sense at all. It is really just backtracking 1,800 steps backwards before you get to take one step forward and any crime that is committed while you are on the run, they come down on hard. Your sentence is consecutive, which means it is served after whichever sentence you went on the run for. And they're definitely going to give you the maximum possible time for your charges if you are on the run, if you were on the run from parole, probation, from anything. Anything you're on the run for, your time is exaggerated. Now, let me explain. If you're on the run from like an open custody or probation in the provincial system, it's not quite as bad. Although there will be a parole uh, bench warrant for your arrest. And if you ever get pulled over, if you ever get questioned, you will go to prison. But chances are your crime is not that serious if it's only provincial time. And chances are that they'll just expect you to kind of pop up somewhere. Because that's usually what happens to petty criminals. They end up doing a crime and popping up somewhere. Now it's a complete different story if you go on the run from the federal system. Now, first of all, there's going on the run from parole, which I have done. I went on the run in 2005 from Bunton Lodge Halfway House in Toronto. I wasn't feeling the three to a room. I wasn't feeling the grocery budget where I had to buy my own food, cook my own food, even though I was, I felt like I was doing a sentence. I was just at that point in my life where I wasn't prepared to live like that. So after 21 days in the halfway house, I went on the run. It didn't take very long for me to start breaking the law, and it definitely didn't take very long for me to get arrested. And when I did get arrested, it was super embarrassing. I jumped into a house through the basement window. As soon as I took two steps, the alarm went off, and it was a screaming loud alarm. By the time I ran up, unlocked the doors, and ran out of the house, the whole neighborhood was outside watching me. I was chased down by helicopter, SWAT, dogs, te dog teams, everything and every resource that they have available to them in York Region. And I was taken to jail after 30 days on the run. And for that 30 days on the run, I got myself 
three years consecutive. And during those three years, I also added another 90 days consecutive. So I turned my sentence of 27 months into five years, nine months, one day. And I did a majority of that sentence in prison, whether it was on a parole violation or if it was just the first violation where I did almost three and a half years, like three and a half years, uh, 41 or 42 months straight. It's just a little bit less than four years. And that was the longest stretch of time that I have done in one go, although there would be two months, 90 days, three months, however much, you know, 90 days and three months, same thing. You know, idiot. But you know what I mean, right? It didn't matter anyways, because I didn't have much free time in between. And anytime I did have free time, I was ch chances are I was on the run or I was under strict conditions. So it was never, I was never really free until recently for my whole adult life. That's being trapped on the, in the system. And going on the run was a big reason for that. I was never, never able to cascade down below medium security in the penitentiary system. I was never able to get to a camp, which is much easier time. There's no fence. There's just much more amenities, much more freedom. You can even get some jobs, work out in the community, make actual money so you can save and put money away for when you get out. And I killed all of those opportunities for myself for going on the run three times in Young Offender and running from a halfway house once in my life. Not to mention I had multiple high-speed chases. Well, one high-speed chase, but multiple chases where the helicopter was on my butt, the dog team's tactical SWAT, lots of money spent chasing me down. And every time they caught me when I was on the run, they would hammer me. Don't get yourself caught up. If you got to do your time, just do your time. It's not worth it. I knew a lifer guy. Okay, I met a lifer guy. He was in Joyceville with me. He was in Fembrook with me. And when we were in Fembrook, he ended up getting sent to camp. Now, this guy had 20 plus years in, had already done a huge amount of his time and would have been eligible for parole within five to 10 years, most likely, and would have went home at some point during that stretch. Except he got a bright idea that it was a good idea to cut, to boogie, to take off from the camp he was living in, which is the best time he's ever going to do as a lifer. And if he violates being at the camp this time, the chance of him ever getting there again and ever getting out again as a lifer are slim. But he still took that opportunity to run. The problem is, in order to run, you got to get the hell out of Canada. There's no way you're going to be doing years and years and years on the run in Canada it is not possible. You will get caught. You'll get tired. You'll get sloppy. You'll get careless eventually because you'll just be exhausted and tired from running. Because when you're running, especially from a federal parole or running from a jail, there's going to be all kinds of stuff on the news about you. There's going to be all kinds of stuff plastered all over social media about you. And it's going to get harder and harder the longer you are on the run to stay on the run. Any number you've ever called, any number you've ever, any person or address that you've ever written while well doing your time, they're going to go there, whether it's Rope Squad, which is the uh, apprehension team for parole violators. They're plain clothes and they come after you hard. They can follow you when you're on parole. They just don't really mess around. And believe me, they are going to be searching for you 24-7. Every single person that is involved in your life, their life is going to be disrupted. Their doors are going to be getting knocked on all the time. Police will be there. They're going to suspect that the people around you are hiding you, even if they're not. Because it's kind of impossible to be on the run without help. Another hard reality of being on the run is money. It costs money to be on the run. You can't just stay in one place. You got to keep on moving. If you stay in one place, you are going to get caught. And the only way to go places, move around, shift from location to location is with money. Now, how do you make money? 
If you're a legitimate citizen, you work, you do whatever you got to do legitimately to make money, whether you're an entrepreneur, regardless what it is, you make your money legitimately. Well, you're on the run. You can't make your money legitimately. You can't run your social insurance number. So if you can't get somebody to give you a cash job where you're kind of earning your money legitimately, then guess what? You have to make money illegally because you got to live. When you're 18, 17, 16, breaking the law, people think it's cool, right? So people will let you sleep on their couch. You know, you can manipulate some people, whether it's females or whatever, to allow you to stay with them. And you can play that role when you're young. But when you're a man, nobody's putting up with that. Nobody who's your friends, who has kids, lives, businesses, is going to put all that at jeopardy to protect you and house you while you're on the run. It becomes a very lonely world. And very, very quickly, you become a liability to everybody around you. And sooner or later, you're lonely. Whether you're hanging around with a room full of criminals, like I said before, whether you're with a room full of criminals or a room full of drug addicts, it doesn't matter. You still feel lonely because those aren't real relationships a lot of the time. Sometimes you can get real friendships and establish that through uh, uh, prison friendships. But most of the time, it's like a business partnership. Each person is kind of getting something from the other. And uh, so you kind of you kind of work together to kind of survive, right? Uh, most of the time, like when I get out of prison, I don't keep contact with a lot of people. Although when I'm in prison, I have good relationships with those people. They're my friends. I consider them people that I'll ride for because that's how prison goes. When you hang out with people for a certain amount of time, you kind of have to be like that. It just is what it is. It's survival. It's the way that prison goes. But typically when I get out, I don't keep in contact with a lot of people because I know what it is. I know what it is. And when you become that person, when you when everybody starts looking at you like you're that lifelong criminal, people start wanting to keep you away the older they get. Because like I said, they don't want to put their whole life at risk for you. I told you about that lifer that went on the run. He had to rely on people to help him go on the run. But guess what happened? He took off from the minimum security. And when he was at his meeting point to get to where he had to go to get the hell out of there, the person who told him they were going to be there got cold feet. And he was left there. And he paced and paced and paced in this park, hoping for these people to come get him. Keep in mind, he is a lifer. Somebody who's in prison for murder. So as soon as they realize he ain't coming back for that night, that night, the cops start going crazy, looking everywhere, bus stops, train stations, everywhere. So now there's no way for him to get out of there. And the person that he had to rely on flaked on him. Fake solid. A lot of people just love to hear themselves talk. They think they want to be involved in that gangster crap until shit really hits the fan. And then they get scared. They get cold feet. They don't want to go to jail. So guess what happened? He was left there. Nobody came to get him. Eventually, the police found him. And now he's screwed. The chance of him ever getting out as a lifer again is slim, man. It's slim. I feel for the guy. Obviously, I share my stories with you guys so you guys don't have to go through these things yourselves. If I can snap my finger, nobody goes to prison. Nobody is addicted to drugs. Nobody experiences trauma. That's what I would do, but that is not a reality, especially in 2021. Let's be honest. The world's kind of messed up right now, and sometimes you got to do what you got to do, and sometimes that can land you in prison, and sometimes situational things can happen that make you feel like you can get out of there. You can go on the run. But remember, it doesn't end. As soon as you are on the run, that warrant is, is, is passed. You're cooked. It's just a matter of time before you have to pay your dues. So believe me when I tell you, you're better off just to deal with it. Man up, accept responsibility for your actions. If you got caught, it's because you made mistakes and sometimes you just got to be the bigger person and, and just man up and go through what you got to go through so that there's light at the end of the tunnel and you get another kick at the can of freedom. If you could please hit that like button, 
If you could please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button so you get all my videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that'd be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link is in the description of all of my videos. So like I said, being on the run is lonely. You got to constantly move. Nobody really cares about you. And the more you keep up with that crap, the less it seems people care about you, even though it's not the case always. Sometimes they just got to think about themselves and worry about their lives and their kids and their and their businesses and whatever they got going on. And if you're living like that, you're a liability. You can't rely on people. And at the end of the day, burn every bridge. You're going to live a really lonely life in prison or on the street. It doesn't matter. If people think you're no good to be around, that all you're going to do is bring trouble or drama when you come, guess what's going to happen? You're going to start spending an awful lot of time alone. And whether you're in prison or not, it's going to feel like you are. Love each and every one of you. The new Matt Clark.